Hey, welcome to Draft Academy. My name is Mike. In this tutorial, I'm going to show you guys how to build an exponent function in C Sharp. So an exponent function is basically a function where we can pass in two numbers, a base number and a power number, and it'll take the base number to the power number. So essentially, it's going to like if I passed in a two and a three, it would give me two raised to the third power, right? Or if I passed in a four and a seven, it would give me four raised to the seventh power. That's essentially what we want to uh, write in this tutorial. So I'm going to come down here below my main method and I'm actually going to create this function. So I'm just going to say static and we're actually going to return a integer. So why don't we just have this accept integers? We'll just keep it simple. And I'm just going to call this um, get pow. So this will basically like get the power and I'm going to make some open and closed curly brackets. And in here, we're going to accept two parameters. So the first is going to be an integer base num, and the second is going to be an integer um, pow num. So we'll basically take the base num and raise it to the pow num, right? So if base num's two and pow num's three, then we'll do two cubed, right? It kind of makes sense. So this is going to be a cool little method. And it kind of poses an interesting challenge because we don't know what base num and pow num is, right? If we knew what power number was, for example, if we knew power number was two, then I could just say base num times base num, right? I could just square base num and we'd be good to go. But I don't know what pow num is. So I don't know how many times I need to multiply base num by itself in order to get the answer. So this kind of poses an interesting challenge. And I'm gonna show you guys how we can use a for loop to solve this challenge. So the first thing I wanna do is just create an integer and I'm just gonna call this result and I'm just gonna set result equal to one. And then eventually what we wanna do is return result. So we want to modify result enough where it represents base num taken to pow num, okay? And what we need to do is we need to keep multiplying result times base num, pow num times. So let me show you guys, we can create a for loop and I'm just gonna create a simple for loop. And remember, when we're creating for loops, the first thing we wanna do is create a um, variable. So I'm just gonna say int i is equal to zero. And I'm gonna start this off at zero. And then what I wanna do is create a looping guard, so a condition. In other words, we're saying we wanna keep looping as long as this condition is true. So I wanna keep looping as long as i is less than pow num. And when I say this, this is basically telling C sharp that I wanna keep looping pow num times. So if pow num is equal to three, we're gonna execute this loop three times. If pow num is equal to five, we'll execute it five times, etc. And the last thing we wanna put inside of this for loop is going to be something we wanna do after each iteration of the loop. So I'm just gonna increment i. And this is a very, very, very simple for loop. Um, so we're looping through here pow num times. So like I said, if pow num is two, we'll go here through here two times. And every time I go through this loop, I basically just want to multiply result times base num. So I can say result is equal to result times base num, just like that. So the first time we go through this loop, result is going to be equal to one, right? So the first time we go through, Result's gonna be equal to one. So now result will be equal to one times base num, right? The first time through result's gonna essentially um, become equal to base num. The second time we go through, result's equal to base num, right? So we're essentially multiplying base num by base num, in other words, base num squared, and storing it inside of this result variable. And we're gonna keep doing that through each iteration. So if we go through this loop three times, then result is gonna have the value of base num cubed. If we go through this loop five times, result will have the value of base num taken to the power of five, right? And then down here, we can just return result. So by using this for loop, we're actually able to figure out what the answer is. So up here inside my main method, let's go ahead and run this. And I'm actually gonna print out the answer. So I'll just say console.writeLine, and we're gonna write the result of get pow. So why don't we try to do like three squared, right? So we'll pass in three and two, and I'm gonna go ahead and run this program. So we should get the result of three squared, which is gonna be nine. And you can see over here, we get nine. Now, I just wanna point out this, um, this get pow method is only gonna work for positive number 
um, powers. So we're not going to be able to do like three and negative two. That's not going to work down here. Um, but we can do positive number um, exponents. So I could say like three, two. Why don't we try like four and three? So this is going to be four cubed. So we should get 64. And yeah, we get 64. All right, so it looks like this method's working. So once again, I'll just walk you through what we did. Um, this get pow method accepted two parameters, base num and pow num. So the goal was to take base num to pow num. We created this for loop over here, and essentially all I did was I set i equal to zero, and we're gonna keep looping as long as i is less than pow num. And what that means is we're gonna go through this loop pow num times. So if pow num was five, that means we went through this for loop five times. And every time we went through this for loop, we multiplied result, which was initially equal to one. We, we said result is gonna be equal to result times base num. So the first time through the loop, result was equal to one. So we ended up getting result is equal to one times base num. So we got base num. Second time through the loop, result was equal to base num. So we said result is equal to base num times base num, essentially. The third time through the loop, result was equal to base num squared. So essentially we were saying result is equal to base num squared times base num, base num cubed. And that's essentially what we did. And that was actually enough for us to get base num taken to pound num. So it's a pretty simple method, although it is a little bit complex because we use this for loop. So what you should do is play around with this method and you know write it on your own and see if you can really wrap your head around what's going on here. Hey, thanks for watching. If you enjoyed the video, please leave a like and subscribe to Draft Academy to be the first to know when we release new content. Also, we're always looking to improve, so if you have any constructive criticism or questions or anything, leave a comment below. Finally, if you're enjoying Draft Academy and you want to help us grow, head over to draftacademy.com forward slash contribute and invest in our future.